Mal, the trick is not just bold, but enlarged type. Okay. <laughs> Queenie, Scotty, Julie, code name, Verity. One young woman captured by the Nazis, tortured and compelled to write an account of her war work revealing allied codes, names, and secret locations. As the title suggests, this is a spy novel about truth, and our heroine's forced confession ultimately reveals the one true thing that matters, a once-in-a-lifetime friendship. With equal parts scholarly research, first-rate storytelling, and her own passion for flying, Elizabeth Wine embeds the reader with the brave pilots of the air transport auxiliary in war-torn England and occupied France, making us laugh, cry, and cheer for the courageous young woman in this gripping page turner. I am delighted to present a 2012 Boston Globe Hornbook Honor Book Award for fiction to Codename Verity, published by Hyperion Books, Edited by Katherine Onder, written by Elizabeth Wine. Okay, I've never done this before because I've always been too embarrassed to, but it's Elizabeth Wien. <laughs> It actually says Elizabeth Vine on the audiobook, but it's not. It's Ween. It's an Ellis Island special. <laughs> the present and the past are inextricably connected. And if the fiction category of this year's Boston Globe Hornbook, Hornbook Awards is anything to go by, we're in the vanguard of a kind of golden age of historical fiction. We're finally escaping the image that anything historical is remote and finished. Contemporary historical fiction brings the past into the present and makes it relevant. I have to say that I always feel like a bit of an imposter when I consider other people's historical fiction. The problem is that I know what goes into creating it. The meticulous curatorial research of No Crystal Stare and the effortless period detail of life and exploded diagram absolutely astonish me. And how do you make the Cuban Missile Crisis into something funny? <laughs> the work of writing these books must have been exhausting. Yet, as a reader, I just sit back and enjoy the ride, taste African coffee in Harlem, and Norfolk strawberries. Ultimately, I really do believe that no matter how extensive our research, what makes these stories work is that they pull the reader in and make the past accessible. They make the past ours. They put us there. The bar for accurate facts and an accessible story keeps being raised. I am never sure I can keep up. One month ago this week, is that for me? <laughs> One month ago this week, I was at the 8th European Summer School in Ravensbrück, in Germany, held on the site of the former women's concentration camp of the same name. I was pretty apprehensive about being there for many reasons, not least of which is that the accommodation is in the former SS guards' housing, and I was staying there for a week. I had only one nightmare. I slept quite well most of the time. What I was most worried about, though, is the fact that I am writing fiction about this camp. And one of the things I deeply doubt is my lack of any authority in attempting to bear witness to this place. However, on the first day of the seminar, one of the organizers told us all, take your own personal expertise very seriously. I keep reminding myself of that, but it is very nice to have other people reminding me of it as well. So thank you to my agent, Ginger Clark, to my British and Canadian editors, Stella Paskins and Amy Black, to my American editor, Catherine Honder, Onder, <laughs> and the tremendously supportive team at Disney Hyperion. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank the Boston Globe Hornbook Awards Committee for confirming that I can take my expertise seriously, for holding Codename Verity up to the light with these other phenomenal books. Thank you. <laughs> 